Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So a little bit of a hippie class today um, in the hips. Let's start off with sitting. Let's do some nice gentle breath work. Sit to start. So sit up nice and tall. Find your sit bones wherever they are. Have a little wiggle. And from there, thinking about your pelvis as a nice, stable, solid, supportive structure that enables you to have that length in your back. So using that base to build on. So think about your sacrum, think about your lower back, lots of uh, neglected bits in there, lots of uh, places where we can hold on to some stress. So just a little attention to your lower back and maybe you want to move your spine this is a side view in and out gently. A little bit of movement there. And as you move forward, lift your heart center a little. So you're taking a curve into the spine. So we have those lovely natural curves in the spine that we need. We're just making sure that we're not trying to force the spine into anything it doesn't want to do, but really honoring where it is, where what shape it is. We all have different, slightly different shaped spines. So taking that movement up into the mid back, kind of around your bra line, getting into the ribs there, and then up by the shoulder blades. Might not feel like much between the shoulder blades because the shoulder blades are so dynamic and there's so much movement there and so much strength and we use them so much for our arms that quite often we don't necessarily, it's hard to feel the, the spine between the shoulder blades. So take your attention to the spine, try and forget about the shoulder blades for now. And then a little higher, almost into your neck. It's that little bump there, if you feel, you'll feel perhaps where your spine has its kind of, it has a prominent outcrop, if you like, a little bony one there and then up into the neck, and you can feel as well. A little bit of space and time to appreciate the spine and keeping that movement going and breathing. So breathing in, breathing a little deeper, breathing in through your nostrils and out through your mouth. And then find where you're comfortable and take that lift and that length into the crown of your head. So you're sort of shining upwards, opening upwards as well. So as you breathe in, allowing all the energy and light and warmth and wonderful stuff that's out there floating around to just be part of you as well. And so we absorb things from our food from the ether, from the air, through all parts of our body. If you put some cream on you, it's going to some of it's going to be absorbed. And the same thing. So just feeling the air on your body. And noticing how you're feeling and thinking about what you want to let go of. So what do you want to set aside? What's the time to kick to the curb? What has to make space and allow you to grow and move in the direction that you want to go in? So anything that's hanging on to you, holding you back, think about how you can let go of that. And in yoga practice, we move and we make space in the body and we strengthen and we stretch and we lengthen. And all of that movement is so subtle, so much of it we don't even notice. There are muscles working that we don't feel that they're working. It's just the ones that we're really targeting that we might go, oh, wow, that, that, I can feel that. So the ones that are all moving and sliding and doing what they do, they're making space. So let's fill up that space with other stuff or just even allow that space to be so that what needs to come in can come in. But in order to make that space, we can also shift some stuff off. So maybe identify what you want to shift off. 
in your sankalpa today. So what is it that you want to let go of? And it might be a big one. It might be something like fear. And a lot of what stops us from doing those crazy, bold, brave, beautiful things is fear. And sometimes we can just get let go of a little bit of fear. And maybe your sankalpa is something completely different. So whatever it is for you today, just close your eyes. Breathe in and out. Really inhabit your body. Be delighted to be in your body today and every day, hopefully. But let's focus on our feeling of ease in our bodies. And that includes accepting the bits that aren't behaving in this perfect way that we would wish them to behave. There's a reason why we might have a, you know, a little bit of an ache here or a little bit of a headache or something not working properly in your digestion. There are reasons for all of that and there are messages from the body. So we have to listen and honor and accept and move with what we have. So sitting up nice and tall, breathing in right down into the belly as deeply as you can. And exhale through your mouth. And as you breathe in, feel yourself lifting, filling, being as expansive as you possibly can, taking up as much space as you possibly can. And as you breathe out, just allow everything to relax, fold in a little, allow your shoulders to come forward. So breathing in. Hold for a moment, and when you're ready, breathe out. So whole body breath. One more. Now allow your breath to come and go as you please, but try if you can, if you remember to lengthen your out breath. That brings us into a state of calm. It soothes our parasympathetic nervous system. And believe me, for the rest of the day, it's firing on all cylinders most of the time. So to enable it to have even just an hour of rest is a huge boost for the body. So go ahead and practice your, practice your breath work throughout the practice today too many practices there but hey yoga is just practice 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 so so welcome and uh, lovely to have you here we're going to start with, again work on the spine a little bit of a seated cat cow so if you take yourself to the sensation of what cat cow feels like use your hands on your knees and you can push away and then you can pull as well to draw yourself upwards so start small, let's send the lower back out and let the shoulders come forward. So it's kind of, we were already doing these movements and let your head drop right down. Ooh, you might feel that in the back of the head. Lengthening through the back of the neck and then send the crown of your head forward. And allow it to come up and let's move into our sort of cow, I suppose. Sending the chest forward, sending the sternum forward, lifting the chin, lengthening through the whole of the front of the body and sending your lower back forward. So as if you're sending your spine to meet your belly button this time. And then let's reverse that. So go at your own pace if you feel comfortable and you know what you're doing. Breathing out as you tuck your chin, sending your lower back out as far behind you as you can. And this time, belly button comes to spine. And then swooping forward on an in breath. And use your arms. and your hands to draw yourself backwards and forwards. Let's just do two more. Make them as deep as you like. Okay. 
And last one. A lovely gentle way to wake the spine up in the morning. Okay, come up to sitting. So we're going to stay in sitting for a little while. We're working on the hips quite, quite a bit today. So let's take the soles of the feet together and come into Baddha Konasana. So you might not have as much movement as you would have at the end of the day in Baddha Konasana, in sleeping perhaps. I don't know, maybe you've been out for a nice long walk or something, but um, just noticing where you are, always noticing where you are and practicing that joy and delight and complete acceptance of where you are. It doesn't mean you settle, doesn't mean you say, I'm going to stay here forever, wherever that is. If there's anything that you're not happy with, you just practice. And all is coming. As my, my lineage guru has once said. So sitting up tall, hips going out, opening, and knees moving down towards the, flat, the floor. And you can bring some movement in. So you can butterfly the knees. You can have your hands on your knees as well. So play with this. See where you find your resistance and push gently against that resistance. So it might be that you want to draw the heels further in, or maybe you're working on moving your knees out and down, keeping the spine long. So let's not curl around in this posture. It helps actually holding onto your feet because you can then draw away and lengthen through the arms. Don't forget to breathe. So we're going to extend this now, leaning forward. Notice where you feel that resistance and gently pushing against it if it is appropriate. So work with what you have, work with where you are and work towards where you want to be. Gently sort of asking the body rather than demanding and keep moving against resistance. And gently come back up again. This time we're going to curl. So we, we were going down with a straight back and now take this crown of the head towards your feet, chin coming into your chest, tuck it in, round. And you might not get much movement. I've got barely any movement in here today. I'm noticing where you might feel tingling or whatever sensation it is, just noticing what's going on. And then gently come back up. Okay, so this time we are keeping the left leg in. So draw that left heel in towards your groin. Right leg goes out to the side. And take it out as far as is comfortable. You might have quite an acute angle. And if you can, try and turn your foot so that your heel is off the ground and up, and maybe the top of the foot is coming towards the ground. So let's just pushing out here a little, working on that knee, and make sure that both sit bones are still on the mat, so we haven't got a floating sit bone, and then up nice and tall. Let's slide the right hand down the right leg, and what we're looking for here is for the side of the body to kind of come over the, over the top of the right thigh. So if you start going forwards or backwards or the front of your body is tilting around, just come back up again and go in. So really very much a sideways movement. We're not twisting the torso. So sliding down, head towards your foot with your hand and look up. That helps stop that kind of the, the left shoulder peeling around to the front. And if you want to add on, notice what's happening in that left hip. Maybe you're feeling something in there. Maybe it's all in the right thigh. 
You can take your left arm up and then just breathe here. If you haven't done much hip work recently, you might find this very strong. I certainly am, but I've been doing far too much sitting in the last few days. And hopefully that feels really good. Opening up, making space. Reach up. And then let's lift to come out. So a little bit of a lift. And all the way up. Lovely. Let's stay here for a moment. Walk the hands forward. So hands to the mat in front of you. Walk them forward. Maybe you could take your forearms down to the mat. Can you creep your hands a little further away? Stretching across your shoulders. Gentle stretch. Let your head drop. Let your neck be relaxed here. Try not to hold any tension in your jaw or your face. Or if it's very hard to let go of, just noticing that it's there. And let's drag the arms back up. So while we're here, let's put in a little bit of a twist. Take your right hand to your left knee. Left hand goes behind. Bit of a strange one to do a twist in because we've got that right leg stuck out the side there. But lifting and twisting. So right from the base of your spine, Sometimes it helps to put the flat of your hand on the outside edge of your bent leg and lift. Keep lifting, try not to crumple. And of course, bring in the twist all the way up into your neck and head, looking around behind you. And eyes to Lovely. Oh, it's always good to have a twist and allow your head to come back to center and your arms. And let's switch legs. So something like that. Again, trying to bring the top of the foot a little bit more onto the floor. Heel coming up, knee pressing down into the mat if you can. Make sure that your sit bones are where they're supposed to be. And the extended foot, the toes are just pointing up towards the ceiling. So if, if your leg is moving forward or backwards, try and just gently encourage it to come, kind of just pointing straight upwards. So sitting up tall. And then we're going to do the same on this side that we did on the other side. So we started off with just sliding that left hand down the left leg towards the foot and keeping, keeping from curling forwards or backwards. Noticing whether this side feels different, if you can remember to what the other side felt like. And allowing the head to come sideways to look upwards. And if it's appropriate for you, if your shoulders are okay and your sides okay, lifting your right arm up here. And looking up to the right one. Send your sternum forward here. So we've got that length in the body. And if you ever find that being static in a posture is uncomfortable or you feel like you just need to move then move it might be that you you know you want to take the arm over further or you want to keep coming in and out do what works for you your body will be giving you messages we need to listen or you need to listen to your body and then let's lift to come out and back down okay this time let's take the hands to the mat and let's curl forward. So not quite the same movement. Send the mid back out behind you. Let your chin drop. And bring your crown of your head down towards the ground. 
tuck your tummy in. So belly button to spine. This is really working on your extended leg, on the lengthening of the muscles, or stretching out the muscles in that extended leg. And then curling up. Let's come into our twist, and this time left hand to right knee. And again, you can either hold on or you can put the outside edge, the back of your hand on the outside edge of your leg. So lifting up, right arm curls round to the back. Take your hand to the floor if you want to push to straighten your spine and all the way around. Remember the eyes, especially if you spend a lot of time reading. And then eyes back. Release the arms and let's take the legs out. So right leg goes out now as well. So both legs out to the sides, however, Whatever angle works for you, and let's just slide down and come up. Small movement, sliding down, coming back up. Sliding down and coming back up again. Can you go a little further? And then bring your legs back into Baddha Konasana. Bound angle pose, heels coming in towards body, knees out to the sides, and let's fold forward a little. And if you can remember how you felt in the last time you did this, just about 10 minutes ago, it's just to see if there's any difference. And there we go. Right, let's come on to a bit more movement. So come up into a squat whatever kind of squat to work for you and let's take the legs out to the sides a little the body coming between hands on the floor and bring yourself up onto toes so heels off the floor toes pressing down into the floor and fingers just giving you a little bit of a support if you need it so we're really curled around here and then let's take the heels down towards the ground if you are up on heels up <laughs> up on toes all the time in your squat that's fine let's stay like that if you can bring your heels down to the mat bring them down to the mat and let's take the hands together in prayer pose use your Elbows to send your knees out to the side and lift up. So lengthen on your spine all the way up. So crown of the head lifting up. Neck is long. Shoulders are strong here. And quite a bit of pressure perhaps on the palms of your hands, pressing in with the knees. Elbows pressing out on the knees. And breathe. And let's release the hands. Allow your knees to come back together a little. I'm going to come up from here into a chair pose. So arms out if that's okay for you. And then let's lift up. So nice and slow and steady. Lift, 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 lift. And come into your chair posture. We haven't done this for a little while. Watch what's happening with your lower back. So don't stick your bottom out. Lengthen in your spine and tuck your hips under a little. So all of that work is being done in the legs and your lower back is not taking, taking on stuff that it doesn't need to. 
So sit, sit right back in that chair. Arms are either forward or slightly up, whatever works for you. And then let's come all the way up to standing. Oof, so much harder going into a chair from squat than it is from standing. So let's try it from standing now. Don't know if you need to, if you do, just roll your hips around and back. Do a nice big hip circle one way and then the other. And then feet just less than hip width apart, arms forward. And this time let's take them up if that works for you and sit back, back into a chair again and breathe. Straight arms, lots of strength in the arms. Tucking your coccyx under. A little bit of length in the lower back. Hold. Hold. Five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly out. Well done. Come back down to the mat. Take your left knee down and right leg out. We're in our gate pose, Padigasana. So toes or foot of the left leg directly behind. So you shouldn't be able to see it from in front of you. And the right leg, have your toes pointing towards the front of the room or the same direction that you're looking in. And take the inner edge of your foot to the mat. If that's uncomfortable or that doesn't work for you, just allow the heel to be on the mat and the toes to come off. But if you can, we're just trying to get a little bit of twist in the hip here. If it doesn't work, don't do it. Lifting up nice and tall again in the spine. So right from that left knee, watch that you're not leaning over too far either way. Your hip should be above your knee and we should be stacking nicely down into that bent leg. If your knee's feeling a bit uncomfortable, try a little bit of extra padding underneath there. So let's come sliding down the right leg here. Left arm goes up. Looking up towards your left hand. And lengthening through the whole of the side of the body. So we're moving a lot with the side of the body makes sense because very much connected with the hips. And breathe. Okay, have you got any more stretch in those ribs on the left side of your body? Can you feel your hip bone? And lift to come out. So lifting up and then out. Let's swap legs, right leg down. And again, whatever you did on this side, do on the other side. So if you did need some padding, go ahead and do the same. Hips forward, so we're not sending the hips back out behind. We're really stacking very nicely on down into this leg. So if you feel that your thigh is working and you're doing a lot on this right thigh, then I would encourage you to send your hips forward and notice the difference. There really shouldn't be a lot of sensation of muscles working in that right thigh. We're just using gravity, <laughs> gravity and bones. Um, so left foot, toes are pointing forwards, allow them to come off if they need to, but otherwise let's try and get that little twist in the hip there. If it feels good, if it doesn't feel good, then adjust that foot because we don't want to be exacerbating something that isn't happy at the moment. Just want to be moving things that are working well in the way that they would like to move. So lifting up with the right hand, inhaling as you slide down. And don't forget to breathe, keep breathing in a mindful way. 
if you can. If your attention starts to wander off onto something else, take it back to your breath, take it back to noticing what's happening in your body. And if those two are kind of all happening fine, you might want to think about your sankalpa. And sometimes during your practice, your sankalpa changes. You just think, no, I don't really care about that today. I want to do, I need something else. So allow that to come in, whatever it is. You don't have to stay with the same initial thoughts that came in. And lift to come out. All the way back down. Lovely. Bring that left knee under as well so we're just in our beautiful getting ready for a ustrasana pose so let me turn sideways again if you need any padding even just as simple as double folding your mat sometimes really helps so feet well, actually let's tuck the feet so toes under hands on hips just to give us a sense of what's going on and where they are, let's push them forward. So bring your hips forward, lengthening through the whole of the front of the thigh and leaning back slightly, lifting the chest. So spine is still long, lift your chin and let's pivot here. So if it works for you, think about those thighs, think about those muscles in there, so strong. Squeeze your glutes a little, send your hips forward. And then let's pivot, sending yourself back, almost as if you're just hinging backwards and forwards. Go back, notice what's working, and then come back. This time, or if you'd like to change it all together and just come into Ustrasana, going one and then the other, go ahead and do that. Um, or pivot back and then find your heels. Then we can send chest forward, bring the shoulder blades together, really squeeze them in and allow the head to drop back if appropriate, if it works for you. And if this isn't working, then come onto one side, but use your whole body. Don't collapse into that arm, lift and use your body. What we're looking for really, is that length all the way from your chin down to your knees. We're just stretching out the whole of the front of the body. But you can do it one side, taking the arm out to the side, and you can do it on the other side. You don't have to do them both together if it's not working. But if it is, go for it. And if it feels super easy, flatten your feet and come down to Ustrasana on flat feet. And you can take your hands um, down to your palms, make sure you send your hips forward. So keep coming in and out, practice, do what works. And then let's come into Balasana. So sending your hips back, let's let them have a little rest. Oh, folding forward over your body and moving your hands all the way forward. Unless you'd rather come into pose of the child with the version with your arms beside your body so breathe take that breath into the sides of your body close your eyes and notice What's happening? You might have some feelings of movement in your mid-back. Some of your muscles might be saying something. <laughs> might be complaining. Might be just enjoying the space that you've made. And then bring yourself up. Send your hands forward. And let's come into a downward facing dog. So tucking your toes under, sending your hips up. Lengthening through the backs of your legs, sending your heels down towards the mat. If downward facing dog doesn't feel right for you today, you can come down 
onto forearms. Sometimes that changes the angle of whatever it is that's upsetting you in your shoulders. And if that doesn't work, you can come back down to Balasan and rest in Balasan. Or come into tabletop. So if you are in a regular downward facing dog, uh, look to your hands and send yourself forward into a plank. So uh, into a good strong plank. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your thighs, lifting up out of your wrists and engaging the whole of your hand. So we're gonna come down into Chaturanga now. Chaturanga is a very low plank. So we're bending the elbows in towards your body, sending them out behind you, slowly, slowly lowering. Lots of strength here, slowly down to the mat and all the way down. Release your feet out flat, so tops of the feet are flat. And then come into baby cobra here. Excuse me, stomach's rumbling. Pushing away. Come into wherever is appropriate. If you are needing to rest your shoulders here, then don't use your arms, just use the muscles in your back. Pushing your feet into the floor, squeezing all the muscles in your legs, squeeze your glutes, bring your shoulders up and your gaze is forward. And if you want to add on when it's appropriate, bringing yourself up into Cobra. And then let's push back, come back again into a child's pose, pose of humility, forehead to the mat, hips to your heels. And we go and look up to your hands. We're going to bring a little bit more movement in here. So looking forward, bring yourself up into a nice tabletop position. And let's come into gun dog, which actually isn't a yoga asana, but let's chuck it in there anyway, because it's good. Left hand pushing down into the mat, right hand comes up and off, left knee comes up and off. So right hand, left leg. Watch what's happening with your hips. Try and keep them in line with each other and try and lift up out of that left arm. So we're not sinking down. Can you straighten the leg a little more? Point your toes, lift your arms. Your arm should be in line with your ear. And hold five, four, three, two, and one. Come back down and as smoothly and as quickly as you can reverse opposite side. Reaching to left arm forward, right leg back. Again, watch out for the hips. And breathe five, four. Can you reach a little further forward with that hand and further back with your leg? Three, two, and one. Come back down. Just breathe here. So we're gonna take the right hand off and we're gonna thread the needle. So send your hand underneath, through, down to the mat, and then just slide the hand away. Bring yourself down to the mat. 
So we're coming to rest on the right shoulder. Hips are up. We're just using that, using the floor to draw back and open up. Stretching the whole of that shoulder and the top of the arm. It's a very gentle stretch. And then let's come back up. Let's go to the other side. So left hand comes off, comes underneath your body. And now the top of your arm to come to the floor. Left hand is extended. And right hand is just where it was. Hips are high. And come back up. Tuck your toes under, come into downward facing dog. Turn your hips up high. Lengthen from your body. And this time, look forwards, take your right foot forward. So lift up, scoop it forward, bring it in between your hands. Take the back knee down, release the foot, and bring yourself up. So let's come into a nice low lunge. If you need to walk the front foot forward a little, go ahead and do that. Knee is over ankle. And we're just stretching again through the hips. You might find that you can go quite low here. We've already done quite a lot of work on warming up the hips and getting things moving in there. So right hand on your knee just for stability. The left hand, you take it to your hips so that you can just check, you know, are you in line or are you opening up to the side? See if you can try and keep your hips in line with each other. Lifting up tall in your body, belly to spine, just gently. And then let's pivot back. So straighten the front leg, let the hip move, hips move down towards your leg. You might want to drag back a bit. So toes are high, heel is low, and you're sitting back almost like a sort of child's pose on the left side, right leg is extended and fold forward. Okay, we're gonna move forward again, back into our long low lunge. So move forward, tuck the toes under, lift off. This time, let's take the knee off. We're going to be super strong here as so we're going to come up to the thigh and then hands up towards the ceiling. So lots of stuff on the hips today. Hopefully you've got time to go for a bit of a walk later on and really get everything beautifully moving. How are you doing? Let's go five, four, Three, two, and one. Hands back down. Take your hands to the mat. Let's release that right foot to take it towards the back foot. Come back into downward facing dog. You might have to adjust where your feet are. Move where you need to. Hips up. Lengthening through the backs of the legs. And then let's look forward to the hands. Lift the left leg, step it forward, right knee comes down to the mat, release your feet, feet, your foot, just one foot at the back there, release it down, and then bring your hands up. So right hand onto your hip if you need it there, or you can have them both on your right thigh if you wish. Um, I find that I, I need a little help and lengthening through the body, lifting up. Breathe.
Now we're going to reverse this. So we're moving back. Come to sit back on your right heel, lengthening through the back of the left leg and fold forward till you feel where you've reached your limit and breathe. And let's move back. So bring yourself up. This time, tuck your toes under. Let's take the leg off. Come up to thigh. And extend your arms up. If that works for you for today, for now, reaching up, sinking a little lower. Think about how strong that back leg is, how strong. The left leg is belly to spine. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bring your hands back down to the mat. This time, step the right foot forward. And let's come into a nice, easy forward fold. So you can just hook your little fingers together, or you can cross your arms. But try and allow your head to relax and your neck. We're just very ragged on in this. Don't worry about where your feet are, where your hips are. All about just feeling the weight of your head and letting it just stretch and relax. Enjoying that sens sensation of blood flow to the face, to the head. Apparently, so Tom Jones, who's still giving concerts at age 80 something, or 80, stands on his head every day. Which I thought was a wonderful fun fact that somebody told me yesterday. And it absolutely helps so much to have this little reverse. If you think about how much time we spend upright and then lying down, but to have that downward pressure and the heart being able to just pump your blood easily to your head, not against gravity. An amazing thing. So let's slowly uncurl now. Come all the way up. Very slow. Lovely. So let's take the hips. And to a little bit more movement here, take the feet out wide, Klasarita Bhattasana. So hands to your hips, have a little wiggle, if that's what they feel like doing. And toes are pointing forwards, but if that doesn't work, you can have them slightly out to the side. I think it's actually much easier to have them pointing forward. Then nice and long in the spine again, like we were right at the beginning. Squeeze your glutes slightly. And feel as if you're drawing your legs together. So they don't move because obviously they're just not going to move unless you were standing on a slippery surface, which I hope you're not to do yoga. But feel as if you're drawing them together so you can feel that strength in your muscles, in all of those huge number of psoas muscles and that bundle that we have going on there. Lift your pelvic floor. And then relax. Just let everything go. So don't squeeze your glutes. Just stand there, propped up. Notice the difference. So let's do that again. Squeeze the glutes. Feel as if you're trying to get your knees to touch each other. 
So squeeze, 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 squeeze. Might look like nothing from the outside, but hopefully you can really feel that. And lift your pelvic floor. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And relax, let go. All right, so that's how strong you are and how much you can feel your muscles working. So we're going to just fold forward here now. So use your hands to fold yourself forward at the waist. Good to try and keep the legs where they are. We're not sticking the bum out. Literally just moving the torso forward. You might need to really focus on your balance here. Fold forward. And that's it. When you come sort of halfway, and then you can allow your hips to relax a little and send your bottom out behind you if it wants to go there. And we're just holding here. Lift your sit bones. Lift your kneecaps. Feel how that changes things. We're going to take the right hand down to the mat in front of you. You might need to fold forward a little more. And either fingertips or palm flat to the floor. Let's extend the left arm out. Another little bit of a twist here. Try not to drop too much weight down into your right hand. Use your legs, use your core, use your body. Let me twist around a little further. And if it works for you, can you look up? And bring your left arm back down. Let's go up with the right. So straight swap. Breathe. And then all the way back down, bring both hands to the mat. Walk your hands out towards your feet. Try and hold on to your ankles. And allow your head to drop down. So another opportunity here for a bit of an inversion. Allow the blood to drop. If blood's going to do what blood's going to do. But allow your head to just be completely relaxed, completely heavy. Let that relaxation spread up into your neck and your shoulders. Still keep a little bit of tension in the legs. So drawing the thighs towards each other, not as much as when we were standing. Lengthening through the back of the neck. And then take your hands to the floor, wherever they'll come to. Maybe you can even get forearms on the floor, palms on the floor, whatever. It might just be fingertips. That's absolutely fine. Whatever works. Walk your feet in a little bit. And then let's come into a squat. So not all the way. Nice, wide, not quite a low squat. We're much more into a bit of a goddess pose here. You might want to let your toes come out to the sides. The back is long. And if you're feeling up for it, this is our last dynamic posture of the day. We're going to release the arms and bring them up into traditional goddess pose. Might have to come up a little. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Can you come down? Whew. Five, four, three two and one well done come all the way down to the mat however works for you ah well done how do you feel do you feel like you've really worked your hips you've opened up now a lot of people hold on to all sorts of things in that area of the body so it might be that you need to release some stuff today 
go for it. You'll feel better afterwards. Right. Bring yourself down to your mat. Let's come via a little bit of a rock and roll. So allow yourself enough space and hold on to your knees or just under. And then let's just gently round the back. Rock. And rock. If it's appropriate for you. If not, just bring yourself down to your mat. A little bit of rock and roll. Yeah. Last one. Bring your knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze. Give them a hug. Well done, you. Well done for getting yourself to your mat. Well done to everybody who makes time for themselves in their day. All right, hold on to that right leg. Let's take the left leg up, toes towards your face, push your heel away, and then let's take that slowly down towards the mat. Slow, 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 slow. A little bit of focus on the digestion. Absolutely crucial for your well being. Good digestive system working, firing on all cylinders. So leg almost down to the ground. I had a little cheeky touch down there. Ground was closer than I thought. And then all the way back up. Still working into the hips. There we go, all the way up. And when you come all the way back up, just swap legs. So squeezing. You want to have a nice connection between your thigh and your torso if possible. So squeezing in as much as you can. While the right leg does it, still wander down and back up again. And then back up. Thank <laughs> you. 